Hmm. Hey, good morning, folks. Looks like we have a lot of people on. Looks like, wow, 13 already. Man, oh man, 23 going that fast. Trying to turn the volume up by using my live fire repetitive app here. By the way, if you haven't seen this, um, sorry about the camera angle there. That's kind of funky. I don't know what happened to my camera. I am using the live fire repetitive function that allows me to set up a part time. If you haven't seen this, you got to check out live fire, the app live fire. I'll be showing more off about this thing. Um, maybe today during the live stream, we'll be talking about that. Let me adjust my camera just a little bit here. I'm not sure what happened. Sucker fell down. Maybe I was drawing so fast. I was like moving so fast. The wind from my draw affected the camera. That's crazy. Who do we have on this morning? Good morning. If you're watching me, my name is Mike C. Klender, and uh, I am still waking up a little bit. I have to admit, I'm kind of beat up from training yesterday. We have a bunch of folks on. Now, Vin is on. Good morning. Looks like you're the first one that popped up. Uh, Will Rhodes, Steve Miller. Good morning, Gilly. Frank, good morning. Good morning. Eric, good morning. Charmaine, Diego, Edward Davies in California. Is that possible? Frank, Scalise, good morning, sir. IDPA. Hello, IDPA. Hello, Chris. Hey, and Chris is saying, share the video. If you haven't uh, done that, please share that and click the like button. We're talking about draw speed today. I don't have a ton of time, but I'm going to have a, a highly productive live stream with you this morning. If you have um, the opportunity, give me a sound check and a video check. Let me know that you can see me okay and you can hear me okay. And uh, we're going to get right into this. Hey, good morning, by the way. Don Fitz from Missouri. Hmm. Mm. Joe Piazza from Florida. Hello, Joe. How are you? Nice to see you. Hanu Manula from Finland. Man, I tell you, Finland, you guys have awesome saunas in Finland from what I've heard. I'm about to order a, a sauna that, that is, uh, I think it's made out of Finnish pine or something like that. Um, Glenn is uh, on as well. Good morning, Glenn. Light. Paul, good morning. Hey, Mr. John Rainer from Dallas, Texas. Hey, Heather, how are you from Las Vegas? Outstanding from Las Vegas. William Luttrell, great. Uh, Kenya, wow. Kimori Kia Wajuma from Kenya, incredible. All right, hey, that's, um, looks like we have good sound and uh, we're gonna get right into this. Of course, my name is Mike C. Kleiner. Nothing happens without safety. So uh, in, in a very quick safety briefing, please make sure that if you're going to follow along with me, you have no loaded firearms near you, you have no live ammunition. So if you're going to dry fire with me in today's how to improve your draw speed live stream, please make sure that you have uh, an unloaded firearm and no live ammo. So go ahead and check it right now. If you want to see what I'm using, I'm using one of my beautiful combat Wilson combat upper customized SIG 320s. I have a clear and empty changer chamber in that gun. I do have a spare magazine. Um, with some dummy rounds. And the reason I have this on my belt is I have two spare magazines because I always put my gear on the same way because you never know. I might want to do some reloads and practice some different things when I'm doing my dry fire routines. But I put some dummy rounds in there to simulate the weight. So my belt and my holster and everything sits exactly how it, I would sit it. Uh, I sit it on my belt. And this is, you know, basically uh, my setup today is my IDPA system. Um, if you look at this, this is also very similar to my USBSA system. I actually have an internal belt inside my belt loops, um, and this is the positioning of my gun and my mag pouches. Now, if I were to switch over to pure USBSA, and I'm, I'm playing with this this fall and in, in this winter, by the way, I would typically have two or three more pouches on the front end um, of my gear. Let me give you just a little bit more camera down angle there. And on those several pouches, they might have angles. So I, I would basically wear the exact same rig I'm wearing right now with two or three more pouches in the front. Of course, this is my carry optics gear that I used recently. Okay. Now, uh, the subject, we're talking about draw speed, but my specific focus today is to introduce you to the three index points and to, um, to explain them in a manner where you will put the time in and work on those three index points, right? If you don't understand those three index points, then you're not really going to find the speed in your draw that you could. We'll talk about reacting the buzzer, stuff like that. So this live stream is all about improving your draw speed. Now, granted, I probably won't put my vest on for you IDPA shooters. We'll talk about the sweep of the vest briefly, but the point is the main uh, importance of the draw is getting your hand on the handgun 
and making sure that when you point it at the target, when the draw the, when the draw ends, that the gun is pointed at the target and you're ready to rock and roll and shoot. Hey, by the way, if you're jumping on this morning, good morning. My name is Mike. If you haven't clicked the like button, do me a favor. Take one or two minutes and click that like button while I continue to adjust my camera. It's giving me kind of fits this morning. Uh, what we found recently with um, our numbers is if we have uh, if we have people clicking the like button, Facebook says, hey, someone likes that. I need to show it to someone else, right? So uh, that's typically what we found. So click the like button, click the share button, and uh, we are going to get right into it. By the way, if you don't have a safe dry fire area, please make sure you do so. All safety rules apply. So you know, I'm not going to point the gun. Uh, dry fire, of, co of course, in the direction of my children's bedroom. So if you have a safe backstop, you're following the safety rules. Four primary safety rules. All guns are loaded, so you know you set us your condition uh, of a firearm. So you got to have a safe back stop, uh, safe back stop, muzzle direction, trigger finger, right? So know those safety rules and uh, abide by them at all times. Will Melton, DDC for life. Good morning, DDC. Who knows? You, the old people can't answer. The new watchers, the new viewers, who can tell me what DDC stands for? I bet some of you don't know what the DDC stands for because that was the original name for our early morning back in the day, here's the deal. It was 6 a.m. start time for our DDCs on a daily basis. Initially, a little bit of history. I did that five days a week. Yes, I did five days a week. I bet some of you probably knows. Oh, Gilly says daily dry fire jack uh, challenge. That's exactly right. Gil, but you can't, that's not, you are old school. You you know the name of that. You can't answer the question. It's supposed to be for all the newies. Um, Steve Bedell from Maine. Good morning. I hope Maine is awesome. I was just up in Maine, as you all know. Beautiful place. First snow, Jared. Wow, you got snow out there, man. Okay, let's do this. Okay, in terms of the draw speed, in order to speed up your draw, um, I'm going to show you three index points. But before we do, before we do that, let me talk to you about a few principles in terms of drawing fast. Uh, the only way you're truly going to develop true draw speed is by putting the work in. And here's the good news. The good news is, you know, the draw, the reload, a malfunction clearance, uh, a turning draw, a stepping draw, a pivoting, uh, or a, a scooping draw. All these things can be practiced dry fire, right? So if you are willing to put the work in uh, to do, you know, to do a bunch of draws, you're going to improve your draw speed. You don't technically have to fire a single round to get better at drawing. Because if you think about this, once you draw the gun out of the holster and you stabilize it in your grip, the shooting process is different than the physical act of actually drawing the handgun and pointing it toward the target. So what I'm talking about today is the act of getting the gun out there and pointing it toward the target. Now, if you haven't, if you haven't looked at um, my, my videos on pulling the trigger, my videos on you know, aiming and how over aiming is useless. You can catch those on my channel as well as the Wilson Combat YouTube channel. But the point is, uh, those things relate to shooting the gun. Okay. In this particular live stream, we're talking about drawing the gun. And I'm not saying uh, not to think about shooting, but my point is, when we're talking about drawing, that's the beautiful news. Like it's it's not terribly chilly outside, but where Jared is, Jared's in Montana right now, and it's probably cold. He's got his first snow. He may or may not want to go outside and practice if it's 20 degrees out and it's snowing. Guess what? I'm in nice, warm, balmy 70 degree temperature in this room right now. Uh, I could set a target up down that hallway. I could set up targets in safe spots and work on the draw process. And that's the awesome thing, okay? So, um, you know, bottom line is put the effort in and you're going to get better your draw, okay? Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. And good morning, a few more folks jumping on. Good morning, Brent. How are you? Sarah J Zajak, Gunslinging Mamas. Good morning, Sarah. Nice to see you on as well. And, um, man, we got a bunch of people on. Peter Tomacek from Czech Republic. Hello, Czech Republic. Peter, nice to see you. I think that's pronounced right. So, okay, let's get into this. So, in terms of drawing, I want to give you a few principles. Uh, number one, when I draw my handgun from whatever position my hands are, at this point in time, my hands are relaxed with my sides. When one of my hands move, they both move, right? So, when my right hand goes to the gun, my left hand is going to move at the same time and the same speed. Now, here, here is what the hands are doing. And then the, the things that I'm doing with my hands are critically important because in step one of the draw process, I am actually finding index point one. 
And when I'm talking about index point one, I'm talking about the initial contact with the gun where I feel how the, the handgun is sitting in my grip. Now, if you look at the, you know, the beaver tail on a 1911 or the tang area of the firearm, this, this, this particular part of the firearm is going to make contact with the web of my hand. And if you kind of pay attention to that, you're going to be able to feel if it's too far to the left or too far to the right, right? Now, some folks will say, well, when you make contact with the firearm, you got to line the arm up with the gun. And that's not really the truth because when I shoot the gun, if you look at the gun, I'll aim directly at the camera right now. You can see that I am left eye dominant and right handed, which is not a big deal. But the point is, my gun doesn't align with my arm. If I tried to align the gun with my arm, it would look like this, right? So that's not a true fact. But I do need to know where the gun is aligned in my hand to get the sights on the target as quickly as possible. Because what I don't want to do when I draw, the, the big time waster other than moving is getting up there and having to fix or align the gun and try to find the sights. If you have to try to find the sights, it really doesn't matter how fast your draw was. You have to do some things in order to shoot the gun. If you have to waste time finding the sights to shoot the gun, then your draw speed could have been incredibly fast, but it's not effective as a, uh, in terms of a good draw process, okay? So when we're doing this, uh, I want you to consider moving one hand with the other hand. So if you watch my strong hand, every time I draw the handgun, my left hand moves, right? So wherever my hands are, maybe my hands are on a barricade, both hands move. Maybe my hands are in the surrender position, both hands move. Maybe I'm holding a broom in my garage for whatever scenario, both hands move. Maybe I'm holding two cups, both hands move. Cell phone in my ear, both hands move, right? Now, my support hand is almost always going to do what I call the belly slap, right? So when I draw, sometimes with my students, I'll say, hey, I want you to slap your belly with your support hand, right? You hear that slap? Boom. Slap your belly. Boom. Try to slap that belly. Leave a big red mark. And here's the point. If you don't move your support hand, most of you are going to end up chasing the gun. Chasing the gun looks like this. I'm chasing the gun. I'm trying to catch up with my support hand because my strong hand is grabbing the gun and my support hand is trying to catch up. It's called chasing. The problem with chasing is when I build the final grip, the final grip building process doesn't happen till here. So don't chase your gun. In order to fix that problem, you've got to move both hands at the same time. I've got to get my support hand into position on my body so I can start to build my grip early. And most of you know this is index point two. This is index point one, right? This angle, right? This is index point two where I'm actually chopping under the trigger guard. But to, to facilitate that, you see, I'm using big words this morning. I'm, I'm acting smart. To facilitate that, I am putting my support hand in a position where when the gun drives by, my support hand can chop right into the trigger guard. If my support hand is still down on my side when I do this, now my support hand has to chase the other hand, and I call that a chasing draw. You know, we, we, we lovingly joke in class that a chasing draw, it, it, it ends up with, well, I hope I get a good grip. So I sure hope it works out, right? Uh, and you don't want to you don't want a hope grip, right? You want a good grip on the handgun. So uh, move both hands at the same time. Now the second part of the equation is what my strong hand is doing. So I want you to take my uh, your, your your eyeballs, right? Let me get a good camera position here, and I want you to watch how I am attacking the gun in the holster. So I'm going to do a couple. Uh, I'm going to do a couple motions to step one and drop. Watch this. Here we go. Right? Can you see it? What's the direction? I am moving the direction from the rear of the gun, right? So when I'm making contact, I'm gonna make contact and I'm, I'm kind of slowing this down for you. I'm gonna attack the gun from the rear. So when I grab the gun, I'm always gonna be driving my strong hand up the back strap of the handgun as aggressively as possible. But I'm attacking the gun from the rear. So what that does is, I should use the facilitate word again, but I'm not going to. What that does is that allows me to take my the index uh, part of my hand and attack the gun from the rear, continually and consistently building a nice high grip. If I just grab the gun like this from the, the top position, I'll get a good grip a lot of times, but sometimes, oops, I'll miss and have to slip that in 
or sometimes I'll grab just a little bit low. Does that make sense? So by attacking the gun from the rear, y'all always drive your hand up the back strap of the handgun. Now, granted, when I do this, I am feeling the position of the tang of the firearm in my hand. Okay. So these are the small details that will dramatically improve your draw. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a second or talk about more of that. We have 80 live viewers on. If 80 of you right now click the like button, just reach down there and click like or click share and put this on a group. We're going to bust 100. I bet we'll bust 100 in about five minutes. So click like or click share, put it on a different group, and we're going to talk about some other things. Let's see who else I have on. Eric Mejia, good morning. Luca is on. Doug Wellington, good morning, sir. How are you? Bruce from Michigan is on. Don is on. Hope, oh, Don says, hope is not a plan. You're exactly right. Pat from northern Wisconsin. I bet it's getting cold up there. Coin number 2446. Mm. Chen from Taiwan. Good morning, Chen from Taiwan. I hope things are great in Taiwan today. Yeah. Derek Gibson from North Carolina. Good morning, Derek. How are you? Edward Joseph. Good morning, sir. How are you? Nice to see you as well. Okay. All right. So um, I know some of you are clicking the like and clicking the share button. I will uh, uh, pause for just a second and we'll start talking about the next thing, which is how the hands come together, right? The three index points. We talked about index number one. We talked a little bit about index number two, and then we'll talk about index number three, and then we'll fine tune the draw and do a few reps, and then we'll open up for some Q&A. By the way, Sandra, I see, see you jumping on. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Nice to have you. Stephanie from N-O-L-A. Stephanie Tucker from Rowan. More from NOLA. What is NOLA? Do I know what that is? I should know what that is. Uh, North Carolina, Edward Joseph. Nice. Rich Alloway. Good to see you, man. All right. Looks like we're going to hit 100 here in just a second. I appreciate you folks that have shared. So back to it. So we talked about a few things. We talked about number one, uh, principle of draw. When one hand moves, they both move, no matter where they come from. Hands relaxed. Surrender position. Hands on the wall, hands holding a broom. They both move at the same time. Look where they go. Your support hand, just to check your support hand positioning, should be somewhere about center line. If you look at my support hand right now, my four fingers are together. Because if you think about this, when you put your hand on the gun, you put your four fingers together. You don't put your hand on the gun like this. So why not close them or why not start the hand out in the position that you're going to put it on the gun? Think about that for a second. Also, when I'm doing this, I pay attention to my hand angle, right? So my hand is an angle like this. My hand is an angle like this. My hand is at an angle. So the second the gun drives by, I can very easily chop into that trigger guard as, as fast as I possibly can. Now, some of you, and I had a student recently in class, um, tend to place your hands either too high or too low. So if your support hand is too high on your body, when I draw the handgun, what do I have to do to get the support hand on the gun? Well, you're right. If you answered, Mike, I got to move it low. And if, it, if, if I have to take my hand from here and move it low, that's costing you time. Now, some of you that were taught to draw with the hand high so you could defend your head or throw strikes, there's, that's a different discussion we'll do in a defensive draw period. To be, to be honest, it becomes ineffective because you're probably too close to draw a handgun. But of course, we're talking about the competition handgun draw today. So if you're taking your hand and having to move it down after the gun comes out of the holster, you're wasting time. And that's maybe that's a good principle I should throw out there in terms of the draw process. Don't waste time, right? Don't waste time when you're grabbing the gun in the holster. Snatch it out right away. Don't make, waste time moving your hands, right? If you look at the, the hand motion itself, you know, if I had a timer at beat, I move my hands as fast and as aggressively as I possibly can. Um, also, in my contact on the handgun, I am not scooping the gun out of the holster. I am actually indexing and attacking the gun from the from the top. So I'm coming to the from the rear of the gun, and my thumb comes over, and I drive my hand up the back strap of the gun. Once again, that, that attack from the rear, and then it comes out and indexes the second hand. So let's talk about the second hand index point. And this is important. This is also something that some of my students miss. How do you figure out where to index the second hand on the handgun? And the easiest way to do that is to pretty much reverse engineer your grip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to uh, do the same. Do this with me. If you've got an unloaded gun, you should have an unloaded gun if you watch the safety briefing. Uh, I want you to flag your thumb up and out of the way. So what this does is this relaxes this muscle. 
and gets the thumb out of the way, okay? The second thing I want you to do is I want you to take the palm of your left hand or right hand if you're a lefty, and I want you to push it into the grip of the handgun, right? As high as you can get the palm in relation to the slide in the grip. So when you, when you do this, your support hand thumb should not be much lower than the slide frame area, okay? So if you push the palm into position in the right spot, now we know we're making contact with the grip of the handgun and the palm of the hand in the right spot. If I were to reverse that for you lefties, it would look like this. I would take the palm of my right hand and I would put that in to that spot, okay? Once again, reverse back to the opposite side. So when I do that, then I can take my hand and I can wrap it around and I can make contact with the trigger guard. Now, if I pay attention to where that finger makes contact with the trigger guard, this is my touch point. So that exact spot right there is where I want to make contact. So once you figure that out, when you draw, your goal should be to hit that spot on the trigger guard. And I call that index point two. If you hit that spot on the trigger guard, your left hand or right hand will naturally come right back into the grip because your finger length is the same. That's why I call it index point two. Now, this brings me to index point three. Index point three is critical, and I'm gonna give you kind of a side view here. When I rotate my hand into the gun, I don't just rotate it horizontally, I rotate it in and up slightly. Now, I didn't tell you to point your thumb forward for a wrist angle. That's, that's uh, I, I don't believe that to be an intelligent thing to do. But what I do want to do is rotate my hand in and as high on the grip as possible. And this is what I call index point three. I can literally feel the corner of my thumb meet and touch this corner of my other thumb. So this corner and this corner. And all that does is that tells me that my left hand got nice and high on the handgun. When I built my handgun grip, it didn't stay low. A lot of times with my students, they tend to grip low with the left hand. You can literally look at my left hand and see that it is low on the handgun. I don't want it there, I want it there. That's better than that. That has more leverage than that. So how do you figure out how to do that? Well, you, you learn what it feels like to rotate the hand in and up slightly, so now I can drive that left palm into position on the grip itself. And that's index point three by the way. Um, and Bill Ott, come on, Mike, I thought this was tips on speeding up your draw. Bill, in order to speed up your draw, you have to build a good grip on the handgun, and index point three is part of the draw process. So if you continue to pay attention, you might learn a thing or two. Here we go. So when we're talking about the draw process, when we, when we understand index point one, index point two, index point three, and start to put those three things together on the draw process, guess what we can do? We can stop the gun on target. When the gun stops on target, the position of the muzzle is aimed. And that's the entire thing. So if you think about this for a second, what is faster? Taking the gun, putting it on the target, and then aiming to try to fire a shot, or taking the gun, indexing it with index point one, index point two, index point three, and knowing where the gun's aimed. And that's exactly why I'm teaching index point one, two, and three. So by the time the gun stops on target, you know exactly where it's aimed. There it is. So the gun stops on target. And if I'm aiming at a small light switch over there, right there on the, I got a little teeny tiny tick mark. I'm gonna aim the gun as I draw, but I know exactly where it's pointed because I paid attention to index point one, two, and three. Now, if I wanna go faster, then I simply start working on moving my hands and arms faster and indexing faster. But I don't ever have to correct the, the gun, or rarely have to correct the gun, because I'm paying attention to index point one, two, three. And the, the dot is literally right there. One, two, three. And I'm feeling this, index point one, two, three, right? Index point one, two, three. So when you're, when you're working on your draw, take the time to work on those index points in your grip building process. And um, looks like Bill is gonna leave us. I'm sorry about that, Bill. Wasn't happy to. 
Sorry, I'm not making you happy today, Bill. You, you should go somewhere else. So the point is, when you're doing this, work on the grip building process. Because true draw speed is not just from moving your hands faster. True draw speed is from understanding that if the gun is aimed exactly where you look when the gun stops on target, there's no wasted time in the correction of the muzzle, if that makes sense. I don't have to worry about moving the muzzle or finding my dot or finding my sights because the sights end up on target as aligned as I need to fire the shot. And the sooner I can fire the shot, the less time I'm going to waste drawing the handgun. Now, once we understand index point one, index point two, and then index point three, we can start to practice picking up the pace. And you can also work on just a chunk of the draw. So if you want to improve your draw speed, but you're not maybe indexing the gun in the holster, well then just work on step one of the draw, right? Attack the gun from the rear, move your left hand. You know, you could change hand positions, right? Okay, and my attack the gun from the rear from the hands up position is the exact same spot. I don't change that. I may simulate, you know, maybe I'm simulating a barricade, hands up on a barricade, hands touching something, right? So you could just practice indexing, and bring the hands as fast as possible. You could also practice the initial pivot, you know, to the right or the initial pivot to the left where you're moving your head and your index in point one. But the point is you can break the draw down to steps. If you're having trouble on index point one, work on index point one. If you're having trouble working on index point two, then my recommendation would be to start here and pull the gun out of the holster and touch, right? Once again, Pull the gun out of the holster and touch. Pull the gun out of the holster and touch. And of course, index point three, you can start from here and practice building the grip and firing the shot. Building the grip and firing the shot. Building the grip, firing the shot. By the way, that particular drill is something we do a bunch of, uh, in my classes. I call it extend, prep, or press. And you can do that dry fire, fire shot. And all I'm doing is I'm presenting the handgun, building my grip, firing a shot. Presenting the handgun, building my grip, firing a shot. And I'm not, I'm not really worried about trying to find a lot of speed. What I'm trying to do there is enough repetitions so I successfully have the ability to know what I'm feeling in my draw. So when I actually draw the gun at speed, you know, when the brain scrambler goes off, the timer goes off, I basically know where the gun's pointed. Uh, when I actually drop. And then you can simply work on pushing the pace faster and faster and faster and find little teeny tiny increments of time. Now, when the gun stops on target, you know, how much trigger prep you have to have and how much verification of the sights is always dictated by the target. So before you're going to grip your handgun, give yourself a little mental statement. Mine is, you know, grip the gun, see the sights, right? Grip the gun, see the sights. Uh, the shot dictates the pace. So the shot, the target, Whatever I'm shooting at dictates the pace. Grip the gun, see the sights, the shot dictates the pace, or let the shot dictate the pace. A little performance statement there. So you're thinking about, you know, drawing, but I'm gripping the gun hard, right? Seeing the sights, in this case, it's the dot, and the shot dictates the pace that I shoot, okay? Good morning, folks. We are jumping on here. Doug Mace from Las Vegas. And uh, Glenn says he starts the segments and join them at the end. Outstanding, outstanding. Man, there's someone on that has some writing I cannot read there. Um, all right, so let's talk about the draw process. We've talked about uh, the, the principle of the draw. When one hand moves, they both move at the same time and same speed. We talked about index point one, index point two, and index point three right, how two hands come together. And the value of learning and feeling those index points is you're getting a consistent draw. Matter of fact, I would say that the value of that is, the, the extreme value of that is consistency of the draw. If you're not paying attention to what you're feeling on the handgun, you're likely not to have a consistent draw, right? So when I'm doing this, before I can ever see the sights and aim them, I can already feel what's going on in the handgun. Like I've got physical sensation in terms of what my hands are doing way before the gun ever stops on target. And if my hands are in a position where I feel what's going on way before my hands stop on target, I'm ahead of the process, if that makes any sense to you, okay? And that, that is how you're going to get a truly 
faster, faster draw. Okay, so uh, Q and A. Who has questions on the draw process? Please. Hey, Kelly Keltner. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? And Howie Williams from Memphis, Tennessee. Good morning. Good morning. If you have a question about the draw, please go ahead and ask it there. Uh, ask it now. Empowered personal protection. Good morning, girl and a gun, Dayton, Ohio. Man, we have a bunch of a girl and a gun, and um, I love that. All those groups out there that are training folks and working hard. So, okay, let me see what I have here. So, um, in terms of drawing your handgun, picking up speed. Step number one, think about the principles. Step number two, work on those index points, right? Refine those index points. And then step number three, do the repetitions. You know, I used to, you know, tell people, you know, get on your, your little live fire app. That's my live fire app. Open it up here. I'll show you how to do this actually. Open that live fire app. Once you have the live fire app, you can start your repetitive part time. And basically what I'm doing here is I can set my timer up and get your 50. I always tell people, get your 50. So when I say get your 50, that means, you know, put 50 repetitions of work in on any given day. If you can do more than 50, if you can do 100 repetitions, if you could do 200 repetitions, that's fantastic. Boy, but if you get your 50, that's really valuable. Like if you imagine practicing 50 draws five days a week or seven days a week, your draw is going to dramatically improve. And if you're watching me going, man, this guy is in competition gear. I'm a defensive shooter. It's not really my thing. Well, imagine you as a defensive shooter grabbing that carry gun in a safe area and working, you know, 50 draws from concealment, right? It's incredibly value, and that 50 draws is going to add up. Uh, what is the single thing we have to do on every single stage and every single match? We've got to draw the handgun 99% of the time. Sometimes we start out with the gun in our hand. Right? What do, what do we have to do if we end up having to defend ourselves? We have to draw the handgun. So you got to put the work in. Okay. And hello, armed women of America, Utah. Michelle Camp. Good morning, Michelle. I think we've emailed back and forth about some teaching, maybe some. Uh, so Dan Broth asked, "Do you practice the index points for different guns, competition versus concealed carry?" So the, so Dan, the, the or Don. I'm sorry, Don. Don Broth. The the index points are the same, right? So the, the index points are the same. If I'm doing a competition draw, I'm still indexing the handgun. I'm touching, I'm touching. If I were to draw the same gun from appendix, I would have done a, you know, a sweep of my shirt and a draw process. So if this were in the appendix position, I would have made my first index point. My hand would be here. They would touch. So I, the, the index points, whether I'm drawing from my defensive rig in the appendix position, which is how I carry, or the competition rig, are the same. And I, yes, Don, 100%, I do pay attention to index points, okay? Uh, Mr. Matt Baker asks, when does my trigger finger touch the trigger? That's a fantastic question. Let's talk about a couple things. Um, when I am indexing, about the time index point two happens, right? So it's about right here in the presentation. At this point, my gun is, is somewhat aimed at the target and my sights are starting to come into my vision. So about the time I form my full grip on the handgun, right about there, I'll take my finger and I'll start to put it inside the trigger guard. So once the gun stops on target, I'm prepping or pressing straight to the tr trigger. So the answer there, um, Matt, is when I fully built my grip and I'm aiming at the target. When I Let me say that differently, Matt, because that's not right. When I fully form my grip and I, my presentation position is such that I'm starting the aiming process, I'm touching the trigger and prepping it, or I'm pressing it, right? There would be no need for me to put the finger in the trigger guard or on the trigger any earlier than that. So, uh, but at the same time, I would want to take the handgun and aim it, and then take the finger and put it in, and then take the finger and prep the trigger. So now I'm a half a second behind the draw process. So the trigger finger goes in. Once I form my grip and in the presentation, as the gun is coming onto the target. And with my students, I always tell my students, when the gun stops on target, you should be either prepping or pressing the trigger. So when the gun stops on target, either prep or press the trigger. Um, Kathleen Jewelry, setting goals, AWS 213, exactly right. Girl and gun, Alvin, Texas. Good morning, Alvin, Texas. Let's see what else I have. Um, why not angle the support hand down? 
wasn't you. You were shoveling snow. It's Jared shoveling snow. So uh, my my support hand. Oh, I, I think I understand. So Jared. So here's the deal. Jared's question is, why not angle the support hand down? Well, it is angled down. It has to be. Uh, it has to be because I'm making contact with the grip, right? And for me to make contact with the grip with my index finger and get my palm into position, there has to be a somewhat angle down. What I don't want you to do is take your hand and try to angle the thumb forward in an effort, this is what the instructors have taught, to line the thumb up with the wrist, okay? This is not correct. This doesn't do anything for you. You can lock the wrist in any position. What that does, however, if you take the thumb and point it too far forward, I overemphasize that rotation, is now I take the palm of my left hand and I pull it away from the back of the gun. So by doing this, I'm pulling the palm of my left hand away from the back of the gun, and now when I fire the gun, the hands rotate apart. They recoil apart. And if my hands are recoiling apart every time, that can't be a very effective shooting position. So be careful of that rotation. Now, I do index here and let my hand come up high on the grip, right? Which means there has, there has to be, based on your hand size, a slight downward angle. So I never said don't angle the hands down. I said don't rotate the hand too far forward where you pull the left hand away from the back of the grip. That's a critical position to be in as well, okay? Um, and Cheryl Tassinar has a dentist appointment. Well, you're right. Practicing basics will give you a better result. Hey, have fun with the dentist. That's not, not very fun, right? I wouldn't want to do that, okay? Um, uh, so Sean asked, do you adjust the index point of your support hand based on the natural point of aim? That's a good question. So, Sean, um, so my index point of my support hand on the trigger guard, right, is typically based on the grip. So if I can take if I can take the grip and reverse engineer it, like put the hand in the perfect spot to leverage as much pressure and angle on the grip as I possibly can, and then I take that hand and I wrap it around and I figure out where it touches, okay, that typically tells me the hand is in the right spot for pressure. Keep in mind that the left hand has something to do with the alignment of the gun, but the, the hand that truly ali aligns the gun is the right hand, the strong hand, I should say. For some of you lefties, that would be the opposite hand, right? So my alignment primarily comes from my strong hand. It knows what to do and how to align the gun. The support hand assists with that alignment, right? And it locks the gun down. So when I'm paying attention to index point two in terms of your question, I am wrapping the hand around and touching that trigger finger. Um, but what you can also do is you can take your draw, and a unique way to find your index points is to reverse the draw. So take the draw from an aimed in position, finger on the trigger, and then take your finger off the trigger and start to rewind the handgun toward the holster as if you were holstering up. And about the spot where your hands no longer touch, right, that's my index point and I can holster. So a good way to really look at your draw process is to not just draw the handgun, but to reverse the handgun as if you're trying to holster it. And of course, when we holster, it's funny. A lot of folks that have an inefficiency in their draw process, you know, they'll draw and they'll scoop, you know, uh, or they'll draw and they'll fish. Um, you know, we'll say, hey, well, here, here, here's the deal. Take your handgun, aim at the target, and reholster. And when they reholster, they do this. They go straight back to the holster. We call that straight lining, by the way, but that's a good way to find that index point. And excuse me a little bit, I'm getting a little lazy. Refine index point two uh, is the way to do that. So hopefully I answered your question, uh, Sean. Glenn, nice to see you on. Good morning. Jim Shanahan is back on again. Good morning. And Mr. Rudy Casper is on as well. Cheryl Deese, good morning, sir. How are you? All right, folks, we covered a bunch of stuff. We have 102 live viewers on, which is fantastic. 121 likes. It's interesting um, when you hit that like button, it sends uh, it sends more folks to the Facebook page. It's kind of cool about that. Um, oh, good. Great question. Ed asks, uh, how much tension do I like in my holster? Uh, so the, the reality is, Ed, uh, it, I, uh, my tension in my holster varies. So his question is, how much tension in the holster? So if I am uh, covered up with a vest doing a full IDPA draw, and I know I'm ripping the vest off of the gun, I like a, if you can hear this, 
there's a little bit of tension on my lock screw. I like that because I can aggressively rip the vest off and if the vest hits the handgun or whatever hits the handgun, I don't have to worry about the handgun flying off my holster, out of my holster. So I tend to have my tension a little higher when I'm shooting IDPA and I'm jerking the vest off on a regular basis. And I might have it a little bit looser if I'm shooting a USPSA match or if I'm doing an IDPA standard stage where all I have to do is draw the handgun from the holster. You know, I may on the break, I may reach down and just adjust my screw slow. But right now, the large majority of the shots, I have just a little bit of tension, but the gun certainly doesn't rattle around the holster. Like I see some competitors and their gun is literally rattling around the holster. If someone bumped it, it would fall off, but I, I don't like that. I, I need a, a little bit of tension in the holster, but of course, much more than that, I would slow the process down, okay? William, you're welcome. Good morning, good morning. All right, folks, uh, that's all I have today. If you have any other questions about the draw process, Throw them up there. I will try to answer those. Uh, we talked about a few things. We talked about the importance of moving your hands at the same time, right, in the same speed. We talked about index one. We talked about index two, how to find both index point one and index point two, and index point three, where the hands come together. By the way, the most uh, ignored or misunderstood index point is probably index point three. And keep in mind, even though we had one customer that didn't like what I was teaching this morning. The reason I talk so much about the grip building process is you can't have a fast draw on a bad grip, right? You can have a fast draw on a bad grip and miss the target. But if you want to hit the target, you can't have a fast draw on a bad grip, which is why I pay attention to the grip building process the entire time when I'm drawing. Like I can feel all three of these index points, right? Um, so if you're working on your draw, you are working on your grip, right? That's the bottom line. So if you don't know how to truly grip the handgun properly, it doesn't really matter how fast you draw the handgun because you're not going to be able to shoot it fast and accurate at the same time. And the last time I checked, fast and accurate is where it is, if that makes any sense, okay? Uh, I don't see any more questions, folks. So, uh, Tim, thank you for your thank yous. And um, you're welcome, Ed. Folks, that's all I have today. Thank you for joining me. Certainly, we have some old DDCers on as well and some old school folks. Nice to see you all, Jim Shanahan, Rudy, and, and uh, Bill, Ed, Gary, all of you folks that jumped on this morning. Thank you for having me, IDPA, Sharon. Hey, uh, and I'm going to end with this. Put the work in, right? Uh, if you want to be better at drawing, practice your draw. You don't have to go to the range. If you want to be better at reloading, practice your reloads, right? You know, if you want to be better, better at those things, you know, about 95% of shooting is not actually shooting. It's getting the gun in your hand or pivoting or turning or stepping or entering a position or whatever else. And if you want to be good at those things, uh, practice them. So here's your challenge for the rest of the week and maybe the rest of the month. It's a matter of fact, the month is good because it's November 2nd. For the rest of the month, I want you to get your 50. And if you get your 50, that means get 50 repetitions of practice on the draw at a minimum Here's your challenge, seven days a week. If you get your 50, drop me a message, send me an email, help at shooting-performance.com. Let me know and, and I'll give you a prize of some sort. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll give you free acts and lifetime memberships to Live Fire, this, this new app that I've been working with, which is fantastic. You got to check it out. So that's all I have. Get your 50, put the work in, and until then, train hard.